time? Yes. They just keep coming in waves. I've lost count of how many I've defeated. Before I realized it, even the sandstorm had stopped. Ah, here comes another wave! <laughs> Leave this round to us. I got interrupted earlier, but now I have something to take my anger out on. <laughs> it's been quite a while since I've seen the flame main in action. I'll leave these to you then. I'll be sure to put on a good show. <laughs> Let's go! Gather! Solidify! The creatures stopped appearing. Was that the last of them? What we fought just now was probably the aftermath of the sandstorm. So we should be safe for the time being. Well fought, everyone. No injuries, I hope. Ah, my apologies. I haven't had a chance to greet you yet. I had my hands full taking care of the village's elderly and children. I am the chief of Aru Village. Everyone usually calls me Uncle Anpu. Sir, I am also originally from the desert, but I have not been back for some time now. May I ask if such sandstorms are common? I can't say they've always been common, uh, but recently the storms have become increasingly severe and frequent. Besides sandstorms, we also occasionally get earthquakes. Uh, according to an investigator who stayed in the village a while ago, these unusual natural phenomena are related to the withering of Ermensul. Hmm. Another effect of Ermensul's withering. So, Ermensul's withering causes withering zones in the forest, and sandstorms and earthquakes here in the desert? Everything in the natural world is inextricably connected to Ermensul. These regional symptoms can indeed be a reflection of Ermensul's present state. <sighs> Everyone in Aru Village needs to take good care of themselves. Uh, speaking of which, why haven't I seen a single village keeper since I got here? Village Keeper? Who are they? Village guards like Candace? Does your curiosity know no bounds? Village Keeper is how Aru Village refers to mad scholars, exiled here by the Academia. Most of them are scholars who lost their sanity after a period of training in the Avidia Forest. The Academia believes that their crazed mutterings may have a negative effect on the psyches of other scholars. So, they're forcibly exiled to the desert. Though if you ask me, it's all a boatload of nonsense. Alas, that's exactly what we've been trying to investigate. One by one, the village keepers have been mysteriously disappearing without a trace. But no one in the village has ever seen them leave. If you're planning to stay around the village for the next few days, I'd appreciate it if you could keep an eye out for them. I've had encounters with those people in the past. I'll see what I can do to help. The Matra are the ones responsible for their exile. Now that you're no longer with them, are you trying to alleviate your guilt and atone for your past sins? <laughs> I'm fascinated by how you think. Mock me if you will, but if you are guilty, I will eliminate you, regardless of my position or identity. Oh, you're the former General Mahamatra. You must be an expert in these kinds of investigations. Thank you for your help. Is it because you're reminded of Hapasia? 
Oh, these poor scholars. First they lose their sanity, now this! We need to help get them back home, safe and sound. But, uh, is it really a good idea to tag along with Sino? You seem like you really don't trust him. I'll be grateful for the assistance. <laughs> no doubt you will do a better job than some of my former subordinates. Let's start by finding a spot to share what we know so far. Okay, but don't we kind of forget the thing? I mean, I don't know. The Dendralcan is arrested and the toy is doing something and bad idea. But no, let's pretend nothing happens. Yeah, sometimes I really don't know what to say of this game story. <laughs> Although I've sent myself into exile, I'm still doing essentially the same things as before. Do you still have any questions for me before we start our investigation? One of my former subordinates told me that this title has its origins in a strange incident. The Academia has long exiled mad scholars to Aru Village. A mysterious phenomenon exists here. When mad scholars first arrive, they are as incoherent and deranged as before. But, after spending some time here, they invariably begin to calm down. Initially, the people of Aru Village greatly resented having to take in the mad scholars. But a strange incident one night changed that. Aru Village was struck by the strongest earthquake in living memory. Seeing buildings on the verge of collapse all around him, the then chief of the village was preparing to take everyone to safety. Suddenly, he noticed a mad scholar crouching in a corner, caressing the ground with his hands. A soft, green light radiated from him, like a divine glow against the backdrop of night. Despite the powerful tremors that ripped through the ground that night, all the houses remained upright, almost as if they had grown roots reaching deep into the ground. In the end, not a single building collapsed, and no one was hurt. After that, the people of Aru Village treated the mad scholars with greater kindness, and began to refer to them as the village keepers. A soft green light? A mad scholar protecting Aru Village? Hmm... What do you make of it, Traveler? Paimon thinks so too. Actually, Sino, do you know if any of the mad scholars continued to wear their Akasha terminals at Aru Village? In theory... They would continue wearing them so the Academia could still monitor their activities. With that said, the main Akasha system would no longer have any interaction with them. Oh, no wonder! Everything makes sense then! Add in the fact that they calmed down, it was probably Nahida who calmed them. If you are able to draw a conclusion from this one story alone, then it appears you possess much more information than I do. So, what do you make of the story? Really? Lesser Lord Kusanali? <laughs> what? You don't believe us? Lesser Lord Kusanali was definitely using the Akasha to give her power to the Mad Scholars! No, it's not so much that I don't believe you. I'm just struck by your reasoning. Lesser Lord Kusanali, the current Dendro Archon, is she really active in Sumeru? The Academia has always placed far greater importance on the late Greater Lord Rukadevata. They've more or less ignored Lesser Lord Kusanali, and I've never had any reason to doubt their views. In addition, I've never heard any stories about Lesser Lord Kusanali and her deeds. To me, she might as well have been a god that never existed. No way! Nahida definitely exists! She's a... How 
should Paimon put it? She's a good Archon who's kind and wise. Even if she says weird stuff sometimes. I've spent many years interrogating criminals, so I can easily tell when someone is lying. Good! Then you should know that we're telling the truth! That look in your eyes... I've never seen that from a liar. You two really must have met Lesser Lord Kusanali. How can this be? To think, our Archon has been amongst us this entire time. All right, now it's our turn to put our skills to good use for this investigation. But easier said than done, especially since we don't have any leads. Hmm. Maybe we can start by knocking on some doors. Yeah, a little break here, and yeah, I want to say you guys about something. I'm gonna skip all this part until the important one because this is just patting to say consider that one we are kind of under pressure because Nahida is hard surface and Dodo is doing who knows what and it's the same issue with Inazuma we do anything that somehow makes us do another thing and other thing happens and somehow we completely forget what we were original doing so I'm gonna summarize kinda for you guys what's happening, what you're gonna miss. First, we have to help this kid grandpa to find. We the only thing that comes out is that the mad scientists that they come here, they are kinda blessed with an Ahida power when something bad happens and they'll save the day. And then kinda starts like a detective side quest where Sino kinda saw up. I'm gonna show some clips because I don't want to skip all the moments. Isn't it a sign of the Scarlet King's power that all the mad scholars have disappeared? If you ask me, they must have been chosen as the final sacrifice for the Scarlet King's resurrection. Huh. Now that you say it, that does make some sense. <laughs> does this mean our lives are finally going to take a turn for the better? Exactly. Those city folks will get what's coming to them. Now, repeat everything you've just said from the very beginning. Huh? Wh who are you? Uh, where did you come from? My patience is running thin. You heard what I oh. asked. Oh! Man, this looks cool. Yeah! Bro, this guy's something else. Just look at his eyes. One wrong move, and he's gonna flay us alive. Then we talk with other NPCs. Another side quest with Dehya happens when we go in right back to kind of the beginning of this. And we fight some NPCs. Dehya try to hack up, but it doesn't work for us. See? There you have it. Mercenaries are just a bunch of faithless scum with only one thing on their minds. Mora. Pathetic. You're all like a pack of street rats. You're not wrong. Mercenaries are driven by Mora, and my faith lies with whoever's paying me. As long as there's a profit to be made, anyone can become my friend. Enough talking! Get him! <laughs> just as I expected. Let's teach him a lesson, Traveler. Following orders. A new punching bag. This is order. I'll protect us. No! Ah! Illusion shattered. Inazuma shines eternal. <laughs> Impossible! How could you...? So, what do you think about your meticulous network now, Zaki? How did you say it? It's only natural for a traveling mercenary like me to be out of the loop. 
I'm guessing your informant told you that I'm just an incompetent merc with no real fighting skills, correct? I mean, that is what I said after all. And of course you would believe everything he reported. The only thing you know about me is that I'm a mercenary, but you've never seen me in action. Even though you heard we went to handle monsters together, you believed that Candace was the only one doing all the real fighting. That so-called flame mane is just a fraud. She admitted it herself. She just uses her connections to gain the trust of others. That's what you thought, right? Ugh. You lied in the village because you figured that we'd have people watching you. And you were stupid enough to fall for it. I figured as much the first time we drank together. You all thought you were so smart. Pathetic. Okay, that should be all of them. Whoa! So you've been planning this since we were in Aruville? I've begun to realize that the sages are behind everything that's happened recently. The Radical's blind belief in the Scarlet King, making the Dendro Archon out to be an enemy. It's all the Academia's trickery. But I see through it all. And unlike them, I can never be hostile towards anyone who's never done anything wrong. Dear. Anyway, looks like we're done with business here. Traveler, lend me a hand. Let's tie him up and bring him to the village. And then we go back. We take Al, the other guy, to a abandoned hospital. We talk about more about details and stuff like that. And we discover who kidnapped them and yeah i'm gonna just skip right to that moment oh yeah there was another moment when the whole thing that sino is the traitor or um, the model of this but the truth is that because how he's diligent in his movement they can predict very well what he's gonna do we can easily yeah he's not a model in that sense but more that they know him so well that they can keep uh, track of him even when he tries to hide so yeah this is so far again i don't say that is bad but this is the same mistake in azuma when we're doing a thing and then another thing and then somehow we're doing another thing that kind of forget the previous one and somehow that's related to that one so i hope you guys don't get mad i mean i gonna put the highlight of this moment between this and yeah hope you enjoy this and yeah we're gonna jump right to the important stuff so where do we go from here yes after leaving the village we should head straight toward the desert the desert like the back of my hand is that because you play here a lot yep one time grandpa almost got lost in the desert but i was the one who brought him back something here what's this it's buried in the sand hmm looks like we'll need to roll up our sleeves and do some work <sighs> and by month that running around everywhere was already enough work okay okay so we have to dig it out whatever's down there looks like it's buried really deep These are likely fragments of an academia-developed device, something akin to a headset. Looks like there were more than one village keeper. They must have been escorted this way because there are device fragments scattered around here. Let's split up and search the area. Chances are that we'll find other things nearby. Is this what we're searching for? It looks kind of scary. 
This is definitely a device used to extract divine knowledge. How did it end up buried in the sand? That can't have been part of the plan. They must have been attacked along the way. Wait, what? Grandpa, I hope you're okay. Don't worry, your grandpa's gonna be fine. Razak didn't display any signs of starvation or dehydration, which means that they left fairly recently. We should be able to catch up. One more thing. Given that the device had been entirely covered by sand, I believe the attack must have happened prior to the sandstorm. Let's keep going. They can't have gone far. But you're flying, aren't you, Paimon? Is flying over sand tiring, too? Ugh, of course it is! Voices, over there. Hmm. It sounds like an argument. Whoa, you have really good ears! <laughs> 